In this video, we're going to look at dividing radical expressions. And um, this brings up something else called rationalizing the denominator. But we'll get to that in a second. Let's look at an um, a, a easy type problem. Just a simple, let's say you had something like uh, the square root of 50 divided by the square root of 2. All right, so remember the rule for multiplying that if you had the square root of a times the square root of b, that is the square root of ab. You can just put them both underneath the square root. The same is true for dividing. The square root of a divided by the square root of b is the square root of a over b, which is the situation we have right here. So this is simply the same as the square root of 50 over 2. 50 divided by 2 is 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. So basically, you as long as both these are underneath the square root, you can just divide them by each other. If one of them was not under the square root, like if you had the square root of 50 over 2, you could not cancel the 2 and the 50. Cannot. No, no, no. Don't do that. Okay? If you had that situation, you could simplify what was uh, under the radical. 25 is a factor of 50. All right, so then we could take the 25 out because it's a perfect square. And the square root of 25 is 5. So we have 5 square root 2 over 2. Can I cancel these 2's? The answer is no, you cannot cancel them because this is not really a 2. This is a square root of 2. If you punch that into your calculator, it's approximately 1.41 something. And this is just a plain old 2, which is exactly equal to 2. You only cancel things if they're equal to each other. These are not equal to each other. Uh, similarly, if we look at our original problem, which was the square root of 50 over the square root of 2, you could break up the square root of 50 to the square root of 25 times the square root of 2 and cancel the square roots of 2 because they're the same. And then you have the square root of 25 is 5. So either way you want to do it. Basically you can just reduce it like a fraction as long as they're both underneath the square root. If you had something where, we'll do this in a different color, part of it was outside the square root and part of it was inside. Say 18, part of it's outside. Oh, let's do 12. And part of it's inside. Uh, 4. Nah, I don't want to do 4 because that's a perfect square. Let's do 6. Then what you could do is you could cancel or reduce the two numbers that are outside the square root. Plain old 6 and plain old 12 reduces to 1 over 2, 1 half. And then you could cancel the 6 into 18 because these are both underneath the square root. That gives you 3. So you have the square root of 3, and that would be on the top. If you thought about canceling it, it would go um, 1, 3. All right, so you have the square root of 3 left on top, and the square root of 1 on the bottom, which is just 1. So your final answer here would be square root of 3 over 2. So pretty simple, just like you know reducing fractions, basically. Just make sure you are only reducing square roots with square roots, and and um, numbers not under the root with other numbers that are not under the root. So now, like I said, we run into uh, a situation called rationalizing the denominator. You might see a problem that looks like this. 6 over square root 7. Okay, well that pretty much seems like it's done. There's nothing to reduce. You know, what am I supposed to do? The directions might say to divide it or it might say to rationalize the denominator. Now a lot of instructors are get a, getting away from rationalizing the denominator because um, you could just punch this in on your calculator and get a decimal representation, but I'm not going to have room to spell denominator. Denominator. We'll squeeze it in. Rationalize the denominator. What that means is that you want to get a rational number in your denominator. Square roots, if they don't simplify, are irrational. So right now we have an irrational number in our denominator and we want to create a rational number. So we're going to use this rule that we looked at on a previous video, which says the square root of a times the square root of a is, 
Can you remember what it is? It is A. Now A is a rational number, right? It's just some kind of whole number, whatever this was underneath the root. So what you can do to create a rational number in your denominator is multiply the bottom of this fraction by square root 7. Square root 7 times square root 7 is just going to be 7. That's going to be nice. But if I multiply the bottom of fraction by something, I have to multiply the top by the same number in order to keep uh, an equivalent expression. So what I have now is 6 square root 7 on the top, and I have square root of 7 times square root of 7, which is just 7 on the bottom. Now in some ways, 6 square root of 7 over 7 looks more complicated than 6 over the square root of 7, but um, this in the box is the rationalized, we have rationalized the denominator of our original problem. And they are actually the same number. We could pull out the calculator and take a look at it. Um, 6 divided by the square root of 7. 6 divided by 7 uh, square root, that's the square root of 7, now I got it equals. So 2.267, 2.267. Two point two six seven. Now what happens if we put our answer in the calculator? And this is kind of a good way to check and see if we do tick 6 times the square root of 7 over 7. 6 times 7 square root equals, so there's the top, divided by 7 equals 2.67, same decimal. Okay, 2.6. 2.267. <clears throat> so what we have are different radical representations of this same value. This one has the denominator rationalized because the denominator is a rational number. It's just that simple. All right, let's try one of these with a variable. Well, maybe we should have you try one first. Let's say you have 4 over square root 5. Just practice that. Rationalize the denominator. All right, so all you have to do is take the same exact number that's in the denominator and just multiply by that number. So we have, why is it, let's, let's try that. Okay, multiply by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. So that gives me 4 square root 5 in the numerator and plain old 5 in the denominator, and I am done. That's all there is to it. Piece of cake. All right, what if we have this with, um, oh, let's see. This one you don't see very often, but I'll show you an example just in case you happen to come across one of these. Let's say you had 3 over 4 plus square root 2. Now this one's a little more difficult because we have a square root of 2 in the denominator and a plus 4. If it was just plain old square root of 2 it wouldn't be so bad but the plus 4 kind of messes it up. If we try to do this the same way we did the other ones like doing this, we would have to multiply this square root 2 by both of these. This is a legal move. You can certainly multiply the top and bottom of a fraction by whatever you want. But in this case, we would end up with that. 3 times the square root of 2. And on the bottom, we'd have square root of 2 times 4, which is 4 square root 2. And square root 2 times square root 2, which is 2. So you see the problem here? We did not get rid of the square root in the denominator. In order to rationalize the denominator, we can't have any square roots left in the denominator. So this multiplying by square root 2 over square root 2 is not going to work. What do we do then? Well, here is the, the thing that makes it work. We're going to multiply by something called the conjugate. The conjugate of a binomial, if you have a binomial a plus b, the conjugate is a minus b. So these two guys would be conjugates of each other. For 4 plus radical 2, then the conjugate of 4 plus radical 2 would be 4 minus radical 2. You just take the sign and change it. Everything else stays the same. Now if I multiply the top by 4 minus square root 2, I got to multiply, or if I multiply the bottom, then I have to multiply the top. And you might be looking at this going, wow, this looks like a mess. How is this going to get nicer? But 
it's going to work. What's going to happen is after we multiply this all out, the denominator is going to be a rational number. And it's going to happen because the middle term is going to drop out when we FOIL. Because we have a binomial in the bottom, two binomials, and we have to multiply them, we're going to end up FOILing. And the top, we're just going to end up distributing the 3. So let's do the top. That part's probably the easiest. So we get 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 times square root 2 is 3, three square root 2, so that wasn't so bad. Now, on the bottom, we have to do 4 times 4, which is 16, and then 4 times square root 2, which is minus 4 square root 2, and then we do this, square root 2 times 4 plus 4 square root 2, and square root 2 times square root 2 is 2, it's the square root of 4, which is 2, and then we have minus because we have a positive times a negative, so we have minus 2. All right, let's take a look and see what happened. On the top, we have 12 minus 3 root 2. So on the bottom, you got minus 4 square root 2 plus 4 square root 2. Those drop out. And that's what the conjugate does for you. The conjugate makes that middle term drop out. So then we have 16 minus 2 on the bottom, which is 14. Okay, can we reduce anything here? Well, you could only reduce if you could reduce it from all the terms. Some of you are going to be tempted to cancel uh, a 2 out of this 12 and 14, but you can't do that because of the 3. You'd have to be able to divide the 12, the 3, and the 14 by something. So that there's no number that goes into 12, 3, and 14, so you're done. Just to give you a little example of, of what I mean, if you had something that came out to be say 10 plus 5 radical 3 over 25 then you could cancel a 5 out of all three terms but you'd have to do it by everything and we don't have that situation here all right so that's what you do to rationalize the denominator when you have a binomial just multiply by the conjugate